Hello everyone, welcome to your next lesson in the B17 topic. This lesson is material cycling. Your objectives for this lesson are to be able to describe the stages of the decay cycle and the water cycle, and explain why materials need to be cycled in a stable community. So the first thing I want you to do is a quick task. Think back to last lesson. What is the difference between a producer and a consumer? Pause the video here, write down the title, date and objectives and complete the quick task. OK, here's the answers to the quick task. Producers produce or make their own food by photosynthesis and consumers consume or eat other organisms for food. So in this picture, we have um, from the same picture from last lesson. This is a bramble here. It's a plant. It uses photosynthesis and um, carbon um, dioxide to produce glucose uh, and water. Um, then the rabbit is a consumer. It consumes or eats the bramble. The fox is also a consumer. It consumes or eats the rabbit. OK. So the first thing I want you to think about is what happens to all of the autumn leaves? Where do all of the autumn leaves go? And also what happens to dead animals? Pause the video here. Have a think. If you're watching the video with someone, have a chat to them about it. Think about what happens to these things. OK, so um, on the previous image, you could see that there was an animal decomposing and the same thing happens to leaf litter. So leaves are basically dead parts of trees. And um, I've found this book, this one of my children's books, and it's about um, in the garden. It's a flat book and there's a picture in it of a compost heap. So um, dead things decompose, dead animals decompose, dead plants decompose, dead plant parts such as leaves decompose. They break down. So um, maybe you have a compost heap, maybe you don't, I don't know. But in this book, at the bottom of the garden, there is a compost heap. Compost helps plants to grow. Why? Because compost is really, really rich in minerals and nutrients that plants need in order to grow healthily. So apart from the carbon from the atmosphere, they need things like nitrogen, magnesium, etc., etc. Um, Now I'm going to show you the next, like if you flip the um, flap down on this page in the book. Uh, this is what happens. So inside the kit, inside the compost heap, it says um, in it, there are kitchen scraps, grass cuttings and paper shreds. Wiggly worms munch through it all, mixing it up and making compost. So um, if we look towards the top of this image, we've got large pieces of detritus and leftovers and remains, twigs and bananas and an apple core, maybe a tea bag. Um, and these large pieces slowly are broken down by decomposers and detritivores. So we call all this waste and leftover stuff detritus. And detritus feeders or detritivores are things that eat it like worms. OK, now, as you go down the compost heap, you can see this is all the newer stuff at the top. And this is the older stuff more towards the bottom, which is broken down even more. So firstly, you, you do get worms in a compost heap, breaking this stuff down. But also at this level, um, well, at all levels, there's bacteria and fungi in there as well, helping to break it down even more until if you um, open the bottom of compost um, um, pile, there's sometimes um, the ones you buy have like an opening here and you can get the compost out. And this compost, as I said, is full of nutrients and minerals that the plants need to grow and you can grow plants using that compost. So let's have a quick review. Detritivores or detritus feeders are organisms that eat biological detritus such as feces, dead plants and animals and urine. And here are two examples. So um, I've got a cute little picture of a worm here. And um, if you've ever noticed these piles on the lawn, this is actually worm castings. And um, basically it's like worm poo, but they, they eat um, dead um, plant matter. And as they're eating it, they also take in a bit of soil. And normally their castings are just um, given out underground. But sometimes when the weather is damp, they come up to the surface of the grass and they leave their castings in a little pile on your lawn. So that's what those little piles on your lawn are, if you've ever noticed those. And also some of you will probably be familiar with dung beetles. So dung beetles um, consume um, feces from um, primary consumers usually. It's quite high in plant matter, this dung. And they roll it into a little ball and lay their eggs inside so that the um, new larvae that hatch have plenty of food to eat. They're actually born inside a big ball of food. 
Okay, so next let's look at decomposers. Decomposers are microorganisms that break down or digest everything. Dead plants and animals, feces, urine, and dead detritus feeders and their waste. Nutrients are returned to the soil. So these decomposers absorb some of the nutrients, but also some of the nutrients are just left to go into the soil. Now, what I'm showing you here is um, some fungi. Now, bacteria are an example of a microorganism that's a decomposer, but also fungi. So what you can see here in this picture is um, a net of fungal cells. OK, and fungi grow under the ground or just on the top of the surface of the ground in these little nets and each tiny can you see the really really thin ones some of them are so tiny they're only one cell thick just one really big elongated cell and they um break down things around them by just secreting enzymes and then here we can see the actual fungus like the um mushroom part of it that's growing on a dead log so mushrooms are actually just the reproductive part of this fungal network so that's why we see fungi, fungi sometimes um, I've not included a picture of bacteria because you can't see bacteria unless it's under a microscope. But as I've said, they also break down um, dead uh, plants and animals, feces, urine and dead detritus feeders and their waste. So actually, the worm castings are further broken down by these microorganisms. Right, what I would like you to do, please, is copy this table into your books. Um, write down the name of the organism and then tick the correct column. So for an earthworm, is it a detritivore or a decomposer? For a maggot, do you think that's a detritivore or a decomposer? So copy the table, fill it in with ticks, and then the, the answers is, are on the next slide. So pause the video here. Okay, so here are your answers. The earthworm and the maggot are both detritivores. The bacteria are classed as decomposers. The dung beetle is a detritivore and fungi are also decomposers. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go through a diagram with you on cycling nutrients. I'm actually drawing this on a laptop and it's quite like a dodgy angle to draw at and it's not the same as drawing at a board in school. So I do hope you'll be patient with me. Um, so first of all, let's start with um, mineral ions in the soil. So here's the soil. <laughs> And there is there are minerals in the soil which are taken up by plants. So let's draw like a tree and like, I don't know, some little grass type plant here. Now, these um, plants are in turn eaten by um, consumers. So let's have like a rabbit again because I keep talking about rabbits. Hello, rabbit. Right, there we go. So there's a little rabbit. And um, the rabbit um does little poops so if you've ever had a pet rabbit you'll see they do little tiny hard poops and um they're really good for your lawn if you let your rabbit exercise on the lawn and they do these little poops on the lawn it's like full of mineral ions and nutrients for the grass to grow again so what happens is um the feces the urine and also sadly if bunny dies all get broken down by detritivores and by those microorganisms called um, decomposers and the nutrients inside the body of the rabbit, inside the feces, inside the urine, all of those nutrients are broken down and returned to the soil. Now, if those nutrients were not returned to the soil, new plants would not be able to grow because plants need those minerals in order to survive. So as you can see, it's a cycle. The, oh, and also if plants die, Actually, let's include that. When plants die, they are also broken down. Okay, and this is excretion. So we've got the death of the plants or the death of the animals and the excretion of the animals. All of these things are broken down, returning the um, nutrients back to the soil here. And then, as I've just said, the soil is full of nutrients, meaning new plants can grow just like that compost we were looking at earlier. The compost is made up of broken down dead plant matter and is full of nutrients so that you can use it to grow new plants. OK, what I would like you to do is get these keynotes down, have a think about what you're writing and think about which correct word goes in which space. Uh, pause the video here and the answers are going to be on the next slide.
Okay, plants need mineral ions from the soil in order to grow. These minerals move into the organisms that eat them. If the minerals aren't returned to the soil, new plants cannot grow. Fortunately, when organisms die or produce waste, the remaining matter is broken down by detritivores and decomposers. The mineral ions return to the soil and can be reused by new plants growing. Okay, the next cycle that you need to know about for this lesson is the water cycle. And you would have come across this both at primary school and in key stage three. Um, I'm going to talk through it really quick, but if you want to, you can type BBC Bite Size GCSE Water Cycle into Google and it brings up the right page, which shows you this exact diagram. I've took this from BBC Bite Size website and also it's got um, written text for you to read through the stages. So I'm just going to talk through it really quick now. First of all, um, evaporation occurs. Now what happens is you've got the ocean here and as the sun heats up the water, so here's the sun, um, infrared radiation heating up the water and the water evaporates and it moves up into the sky the water vapor moves up and condenses into clouds okay so clouds are condensed water that's been evaporated from the ocean and from the ground okay so the clouds float around and at the moment here they're fairly warm still but as they get higher and higher they get colder so cooling occurs and as they get colder, they turn from being water vapour back into being liquid water and precipitation occurs. Now, don't confuse this with the chemistry word precipitation. When we talk about precipitation in terms of weather, we just mean rain or snow or hail or something like that. So it's just the gaseous water in the clouds turning back into liquid water and falling down to the ground. Now, what can happen is either um, it sort of just runs down the side of the mountain, like um, and pop forms rivers and streams and whatever, and goes back to the eventually goes back to the ocean, or percolation occurs, which is where the water sinks into the ground through rocks and through bedrock and through soil and gravel and clay and whatever else, and returns to the ocean. Sometimes it pops up here. Can you see this here? If the water pops back up again, that's where you get spring water from. So spring water is basically water that's been percolated through the rocks and through the ground and through the soil and then pops back up again. Now, the last thing I've not mentioned on this diagram is transpiration. So that is where plants, so here's a tree, plants lose water from the underside of their leaves where the little stomata, the little holes are. And that um, vapour also evaporates so you know if you think of somewhere like the rainforest there's lots and lots of plants and it's very very hot and humid because those plants are losing a lot of water and um, last thing that's also not on this diagram is respiration so i'm just going to put a little asterisk down here respiration so all living things respire, they release energy, and water is one of the waste products. So if you breathe out onto a mirror, the mirror goes foggy because you are breathing out water vapour. So all animals and plants respire and release water vapour into the atmosphere too. So that's your water cycle. What I would like you to do is use the information from the video that I've just talked through. Use the AQI Biology book, page 278 and 279 and or the BBC Bite Size page that I directed you to on the previous slide. So you've got lots of resources there to help you think the way through the water cycle. I want you to make a flow chart or a list of bullet points explaining all of the stages of the water cycle. And make sure you get those keywords in there. So those keywords um, were transpiration, respiration, evaporation, condensation, cooling, precipitation, and percolation. So try and make sure you've included all those keywords. Pause the video here. Once you've done it, play the video again. Okay, and you need to think about if you've met your objectives. Can you describe the stages of the decay cycle and water cycle from your memory? If you're confident doing that, smiley face. Not sure, middle face. Feeling underconfident, draw a sad face. You also need to be able to explain why materials need to be cycled in a stable community. If you feel like you can do that on your own, smiley face. If you think you're not really sure, middle face. And if you're not sure at all, sad face. Okay, and as with every lesson, what you need to do now is some further study. Think about the objectives that you haven't really met or that you're still unsure about. Check out other videos such as Cognito, Free Science Lessons or Primrose Kitten.
Complete work from the AQA Biology Digital Book, page 278 and 279. You could also use BBC Bite Size, GCSE Pod or Seneca Learning. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye.